This is Ryzen 5 5600X running on $50 motherboard. The cheapest motherboard you can buy to run this CPU. And it looks great doing it. To understand why, here's the list of AMD chipsets that support Ryzen 5 5600X CPU. A520, B550, X570. They don't look that different from each other. Because they're not at least on paper. Now we'll look at the actual boards though. They look completely different. $200 X570 is huge compared to $50 A520. It is not just form factor, ATX versus micro ATX. I'll explain in a second. Last year we looked at A320 chipset based motherboards. Now it's time for A520 lineup. And let me tell you, A520 chipset is A320 on steroids. Here's the lineup. Ezrock A520M HDV, Gigabyte A520M S2H, Asus Prime A520M-K, and as a bonus, Gigabyte A520M DS3H, a bigger version of S2H. So what makes these boards so cheap? Which one has the best power delivery and features? Which one supports Ryzen 5000 series out of the box? And what is so special? With all that, with the main goal to save you money on things that are more important, like overpaying for graphics card. Time for some tech textures. Let's start with the first question. Why these motherboards so cheap? When designing a motherboard, you have to stick to a certain specification. A520 chipset doesn't make things slower, just takes away some features. Except poorly designed VRM can literally bite you in the ass, even on premium boards like X570. See, it's not just ATX versus micro ATX. But why though? Saj, I'll show you. Real quick boys, flip your phone like this, click on like and subscribe. Let's start with ASRock A520M HDV. The board came out in August last year with the GSA 1080 microcode update that supports Ryzen 5000 series out of the box. If you buy this with Ryzen 5000, you don't have to do anything. Just put everything together and you're all set. However, I do recommend BIOS version 1.7 or later with 1202 microcode update that fixes USB 2.0 connectivity. You don't want to lose the game of Warzone because your mouse stopped working. The mouse is okay, don't worry. Here's how you update the BIOS on ASRock board. Download the latest BIOS from the support page on ASRock website, unzip the file and put the USB stick, get into the BIOS, instant flash, select then update, good to go. A520 chipset doesn't support overclocking. We all knew that. What it does support is memory profile to match frequencies and timings advertised on DDR4 modules. Make sure you select XMP profile, then move on to Infinity Fabric. Base your selection on one-to-one -one ratio, meaning if your XMP says 3600, your actual memory speed is 1800 DDR. Double letter match infinity fabric 1800 in this case if your memory stick xmp says 3200 your infinity fabric is 1600. now we unlock the full potential of a520 chipset to figure out what, whether the board is good enough for six core processor we have to look at the power delivery the latest generation of amd cpus are extremely sensitive to vrm vrm stands for voltage regulator module Bzz. these phases supply cpu with current on ASRock board, we have four phases for vCore and two for SOC. Basically, better quality or higher quantity of these make AMD Ryzen operate at higher frequency. This is why premium X570 motherboards have so many phases. For testing, we are using 8064 to slam CPU with the workload. On ASRock board, VRM temps reported were over 100C even before the test started, plus L plus ratio. Temps are on thermocouples directly mounted on high side MOSFETs, topping out around 57C. Choosing an ASRock A520M HDV board for Ryzen 5 5600X is completely acceptable. 3D Mark x Spy CPU score is 7715. Next up is Gigabyte A520M S2H. Well, it went down real quick. Upon checking CPU support page on the support website of the Gigabyte support console, bias version needs to be at least F10. So this board is no go and we have to move on. We're not gonna read the website about the Q flash feature that let us update the bias without the CPU. <laughs> no, that's a waste of time putting the USB stick into the white slot and click the button so the board can update itself. We're not stupid. <laughs> Don't forget to set XMP and F clock in the bias. If you need to update the bias, just find the Q flash in the bias. The process is very easy, you'll be okay. 
This board also supports brand new 5700G with integrated graphics. So make sure you subscribe. Hardware info came back with 69 degrees, 68 degrees on thermocouples, which is insane. That brings me so much closer to the last question. What is so special? During testing, I've noticed power drop. Not a big deal. It just lowers the clock of the CPU a little bit. Time Spy score 8100 which is better than ASRock. Remember, temps are similar, yet Gigabyte pulls ahead. Asus A520M-K, same story, did not work out of the box with 5600X. In this case, have older CPU handy like Ryzen 5 3600 and use Easy Flash to update. More expensive Asus boards come with flashback functionality, similar to QFlash we used on Gigabyte, just not on this budget board. PWM control does not report VRM temps at all. On clamps, the max I've seen is 63 degrees, which is time spy score 7682. So far, Gigabyte A520 S2A checks all the boxes. It has a small issue with the power delivery. Uh, we had a little choke. What if we'll add another phase to the VRM so it would never happen again? I would assume that. I would assume that was the thinking behind a DS3H board. Instead of 4 plus 3, we have 5 on vCore and 3 on SOC. 67 degrees on VRM, similar score in Time Spy, same trouble with the power drop. So the only beneficial thing is 4 RAM slots instead of 2. That brings me to the last question for today. What is so special this time around for these cheaper boards? Ryzen 5000 requires less current to operate and boost properly if everything works out of the box and you can update the CPU without the bias. The bias without the CPU. No conclusion today in case you just skip to the end. So go back to the beginning and watch the whole thing, you lazy f***. Got him. All right. See you next week, boys.